The Duchess by XX Impressions. Chapter 2 The greenery of the park was an enjoyable sight to see as you took a leisurely stroll by yourself on such a sunny day. With your gaze full of the stretching grasses, towering trees, and manicured bushes, you found that you were easily lost in a serene daze. It was only when you noticed an unexpected pop of blue amongst all the shades of green that your mind slowly came back to reality. Squinting, you tried to make out what the pop of blue was as it fluttered in the wind on a low-hanging branch. Reaching up and pulling it between your fingers, you held the object out in front of you and saw that it was a beautiful silk ribbon. You were about to wonder who it might belong to when the sounds of an inconsolable child reached your ears. No, you do not understand Daphne. Mama will never let me have another ribbon again. Turning your head to see a little girl now openly crying nearby with two other people trying their best to comfort her, you cautiously began to make your way closer as the one you assumed to be Daphne spoke in a kind voice. Oh, I am sure that is not true Hyacinth. Mother will be nothing but understanding if you have misplaced your ribbon. But the child only shook her head in fervent disagreement as her sobs continued. Having finally neared the group of three, you tried to be as gentle as you could when you opened your mouth and said, Excuse me lovely. Speaking directly to the young girl, you waited till her cries had slowed into sniffles and she looked your way with broken-hearted eyes. I saw that this matched your dress perfectly and wondered if it might be yours. With a friendly smile, you held your hand out for her to see what you were holding and got to watch as her expression changed from devastated to astonished within a second. My ribbon. She happily gasped with disbelief. After hurriedly taking it from your grasp and giving it an inspection, the child looked back up to you with a bright grin on her face as she said. It is mine, thank you. You waved a dismissive hand as you kindly responded. Oh, it was my pleasure sweet one. Pleasantly done with your task, you were turning to walk away when you suddenly heard. Wait. Looking back, you listened as the now enthusiastic girl said. My name is Hyacinth. This is my sister Daphne and her husband Simon. She said while pointing at the nearby couple. Turning back to you, she eagerly asked. What is your name? Charmed at her genuine curiosity, you smiled as you introduced yourself. Recognizing your married last name, the one called Simon began to speak. Ah, uh, I was an acquaintance of your late husband. You have my condolences on his passing. You gave a customary nod of thanks while his wife proceeded to sympathetically say. Yes, mine as well, Duchess. I know how difficult it can be to rejoin society after a loss. If you are ever in need of a listening ear, I would be happy to fulfill that role. Especially after you found my sister's ribbon. Touched at the kind offer, you were about to reply when the aforementioned sister gave a surprised gasp and looked at you with wide eyes. You are Duchess. She incredulously asked. Daphne is a duchess. Unable to contain her sudden glee, the once crying girl started to jump in place as she asked. Are you in need of a husband? My eldest brother says he is in need of a wife, and I think you would be perfect. While Daphne said Hyacinth's name in reprimand, you were trying to hide your bashful and humid laughter at her childishly audacious question. Immediately brushing off the other titled women's attempt to apologize on her sister's behalf, you decided to give an amused reply to the girl's inquiry. Is that so? And who might your eldest brother be? Without hesitation, Hyacinth proudly announced. Anthony Bridgerton. He is a Viscount. Without another moment's pause, her eyes started to dart around in search of something as she excitedly said. He is here today. But where has he gone to? When her small stature failed to help in finding her brother, the Duke and Duchess of Hastings also began to look and only stopped once they noticed a sizable number of females crowding one man. While they both smirked to themselves at what they saw, it was the Duke who inevitably explained with a touch of cheekiness. That is Antony being surrounded by all the other women who want to become his wife. Following his gaze with your own, you had to stop yourself from freezing in place as you recognized the person he was pointing out. Because with a thrilling flutter, you realized it was your handsome rescuer from the ball. As you continued looking, 
you saw that Simon had not been exaggerating when he said the one called Antony was being surrounded. There must have been at least half a dozen mamas and their daughters trying to get the attention of this apparent bachelor, and admittedly, you could see why. But before you could dwell on the sight any further, Hyacinth let out an offended sound. But they cannot be his wife. I did not choose them. As you looked back at her brother clearly struggling across the way, your mind quickly came to a decision about the situation. Giving the young girl a reassuring smile, you said with a playful seriousness. Then we must do something now, mustn't we? Without waiting for a reply, you began to make your way toward the mob-like chaos. You allowed yourself close enough to the fray to be heard before you politely called out over the pushy chatter of this season's debutantes. Lord Bridgerton. All the talking ceased when Lord Bridgerton's head turned and his eyes locked with yours. Seeing the recognition on his face, you hoped you were not too bold as you continued by saying for the sake of your audience. Were we not to promenade through the park today? Phrasing the question so he could refuse your help if he wanted to, you saw the immediate gratitude shining in his eyes when he caught your meaning and did not. Yes, we were. He happily agreed in reply. As he started to give his regrets and apologies while smoothly extracting himself from the crowd of silently stunned ladies, he kept flicking his eyes back to yours as if to ensure you would not disappear until he was securely next to you on the sidewalk. Wanting to put some distance between the mob still watching and himself, Anthony was only too glad to offer you his arm as he escorted you away. Once you were safe from being overheard, Lord Bridgerton quietly admitted while keeping to a leisurely stroll. I did not expect to see you again. Given how your second meeting had come about, you could not stop yourself from giving a coy smile as you shrugged and said in response. You looked like you were in need of rescuing from where I was standing. Because you were facing forward as you both walked side by side, you did not get to see the humid smirk on Lord Bridgerton's face as he recalled saying those exact words to you. But you did get to listen as he replied in an amused tone. Merely a matter of perspective, was it not? Glancing toward you as he asked this question meant you each caught the other's gaze when you happened to look his way as well. Only being able to hold the staring contest for a few moments, you and the Viscount wound up letting out small chuckles of laughter seconds later. After collecting yourselves, you continued to walk in a comfortable silence that was broken when Antony decided to ask. So how are you? When you looked at him with surprise, he briefly cleared his throat and followed up with. It is just that I could not help but wonder how you were doing after the ball. Not wishing to think about that night or the drunk who ruined it, you were quick to say. I am fine, thank you. While flashing him a reassuring grin. Somehow unconvinced, Antony hesitated for a moment before proceeding to say. I also could not help but to wonder why that man was trying to attack you at all. Huffing a small sigh at the question, you responded with a rueful smile on your lips. And I am afraid you will have to continue wondering. Pulling away in order to face the Viscount, you switched to a more formal voice as you decided it was time for this interaction to come to a close. Lord Bridgerton, while you have my gratitude for what you did that night, I would say that we are currently even. So, I think it best that we go our separate ways from now on. With that said, you gave a polite smile as you dipped your head in goodbye and started to take your leave. But you had only just made it past him when a bold question stopped you in your tracks. And if I disagreed? Pausing, it took a quick second for you to understand the implication of his words. But once you did, you slowly turned your head to look back at your former rescuer and saw the sincere expression of a simmering challenge. Stuck in his gaze, your eyes mimicked a challenge of their own as you slyly replied with a smirk now on your face. I was unfortunately not asking for your opinion. And turned to continue walking away. Anthony could only watch as your figure moved further and further into the distance before his approaching eldest sister caught his attention. Brother? What was all that about? Still in a state of complete intrigue, Anthony was honest when he responded by saying, I am not sure. As his mind began to whirl at the thought of needing to see you again, he turned toward Daphne after being struck with a brilliant idea. But we are going to throw a dinner party. 
He said, now smiling. And I am going to find out. End of chapter 2